breaking GOP one news, 47,000 dock workers at the East and Gulf Coast ports are striking. The strike covers ports from Maine to Texas. And guess what they're transporting? Let's get into this from yours truly, a white collar union worker. So the International Longshore Association is facing a major dilemma. As you may have heard, if you have not, there is a major dock workers union strike on the ports, the ports between East and Gulf Court Coast. The strike covers ports from Maine to Texas. And these ports, these docks, transport seafood, vegetables, coffee, and fruits, as well as, guess what? GLP-1 brand medications, Ozempic, Wagovi, Zetbound, and Manjaro. Well, what this looks like here, folks, this looks like a new level of temporary shortages for GLP-1 medication, as well as temporary shortages for perishable goods and foods that are transported from these docks. It's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on here. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, I guess Eli Lilly and Nova Nordis did not take into the account of the union workers who are responsible to transporting your medications as well as other goods in general, agricultural goods, etc., cross state lines. I don't know if they had an idea or inclination that this could be an issue. Are the unions being treated correctly? Now, you guys, this is touches a little at home for me as I am a 14 year white collar union worker. Um, so I definitely understand the importance of collective bargaining and contractual agreements. And what this is, this is definitely connect to a contractual agreement. These dock workers, a contract has expired. And once the contract expired, the party is at the union party is at liberty to pursue a picket strike at midnight or as soon as that contract strikes. Um, excuse me, that contract expires, a strike can occur, and that's exactly what occurred. As soon as the contract expired at midnight, not too long after midnight, the dock workers at the Port of Philadelphia holla back hit the picket line and started striking. And now you see it crossing state lines, touching base with other dock worker unions underneath the same umbrella. So what does this mean? What does this mean? Okay, right now, because it's not just GOP one medications that we should be concerned about. We also need to be concerned about the agricultural goods that is transported through through the docks. The dock workers are essential workers. And from my understanding, they were well paid. I don't know what's going on here, but that's why when one contract expires, it's time to renew, renew another one. And if information is not brought together that meets the likings of the unionized party, in regard to their working conditions, a strike will occur and may continue until their demands are made. So how long is the strike forecasted to last, right? Many were wondering. Again, through the art of collective bargaining, it could be a TBD to be determined 
based on whether the demands are met for the workers. And in this case, the workers want better working conditions, a new contract. So this is not something that just can quiet down, you know, so swiftly. I mean, although it could, if you have the right political parties in place to appease, make the negotiations, meet, you know, meet the, um, the negotiating expectations of the union uh, party, then it could very well be something that go, can go away like within 24 hours. It's about going to the drawing boards and the table, okay? And if it's not fulfilled, it can be extended out, but that can cause some negative damaging implications on whatever products are being transported on the um the existing ability to work and earn for the for the union workers i mean to a point you are covered in it to you know to an extent um within a strike but you know you don't want to strike to carry out too long because within a strike then you still can be losing money so time is definitely of the essence and when it comes to the GOP one brand medication I know Lily and Nova, they are like, what is going on? How are we going to resolve this, alleviate the situation so we can get our medications back in transport? Because that's what the issue is now. Medications are on halt that's going through the ports of Maine to Texas. A lot of GOP1 brand patients lie between those states. So at this point, we really just need to sit, watch, and wait it out. Because that's one thing when it comes to union strikes. You watch them aggressively. And they're not something that really last the long it can have the potential to be drawn out there have been some union strikes in history that have been extended beyond what you can believe for the cause for the cause of solidarity for the cause of, of collective bargaining better wages better working conditions etc so we really don't know the trajectory of this based off of the head, the, the the local president, you understand? The union local president who's trying to make the negotiations and present the offers and all of that. It's a lot of, you know, pieces up in here. Parties involved. That can resolve it, but will it be resolved favorably for the workers, for them to be appeased enough to return to work? That's the thing. We have to get down to what they want within their contract. Of course, I, I don't have the details on that. That's not disclosed at this time. But we do know the strike is beyond behind their expired contract. So really, at this point, like I said, just sit back and watch. And in the meantime, stock up on your compound medications stock up on your GOP one compounds because I'm telling you every time I turn around there is something going on in regard to GOP one brand medication shortage and so forth just when Lily thought he was making way coming out with the, the Z bound vials getting the FDA slowly on his side right in conjunction with his distribution chains and cutting off the pharmaceutical part because that's technically not Lily's responsibility as far as the delays from the distribution to the pharmacy, you know, which all is kind of falling in the FDA's favor. They're, they're working out something in agreement with the shortage. But here comes Mr. who comes and intervene with the FDA's 
and Lily's trajectory. A strike. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? To co further complicate situations and just pretty much to further solidify the compound market and this essential need for the compound market in the event such drastic events as this take place that can put a halt on the resources that are supposed to go out to people, to the people, to patients, to citizens in general, because the dock quarters are transport, agricultural commodities that we need, perishables, and most recently, GOP-1 brand medications. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Give them folks what they want. Stop playing. That's one thing. Stop playing with union workers. When union workers are highly essential in the, the industrial operation of the cities, even the um, even in the white collar sector, okay, unions are essential, which is reason why a lot of private sector companies, corporations frown upon them because unions hold a lot of power. And once you start one, you can't just dissolve it, okay? Call the shots. It's called call calling collective bargaining, calling the shots on your salary, on bonuses, this, that, and the third, y'all. Um, so, I mean, that, that, that's just a little tea and experience information from me who's been in, who's been in the union white collar game for 14 years and still going and still loving it and loving what I do for my career. Um, but this... This was definitely a surprise. Out of all the situations and casualties that end up coming about GOP-1 medication shortages, I definitely didn't expect there to be a dock worker shortage across the state line. I I mean, if that's not sending y'all a message, yo, if that's not sending a message, I don't know what is, but it is clear. It is evidently clear that you cannot just count on a brand named GOP-1 Medications Accessibility. But what you can count on is the production and distribution of compound GOP-1 medications through compound pharmacies that are sourced in the compound market. That's what you can depend on. I don't hear any foolishness with that knock on wood you know but that's what you can depend on so stock up stock up because as i've said in previous videos you don't know what color the wall is going to turn according to Seely. okay Seely says you don't know the color the wall gonna turn so just watch and clearly that's what this means. And that's what it's showing us. I truly, truly hope that this dock worker strike is resolved. Not specifically on the account of GOP-1 medication, but that'd be great because people, you know, need their medication. And that's going to be another inkling contributing to the shortage. But for people who work very hard to get the pay that they are entitled to that they deserve okay and so that production can go back to normal and perishables you know such as seafood vegetables coffee fruits etc can continue to be transported across state lines through dock workers so that's what i'm hoping i, I definitely do hope that this has a great resolve and in turn, uh, reinstate the availability of GOP-1 brand medications that happen to be um, delayed through this strike because the, the ports transport these medications. 
find this all so interesting and just further confirmation that there needs to be two solid entities of GOP-1 medications available at all times. And this is just my position. And this, uh, this is a position, like, if I had the authority or I had the accreditation to present that to the FDA, that's what I would present. In a very well presented, you know, favorable argument, but there needs to be two entities to remain. It needs to be branded GOP-1 medications, and there needs to be compound GOP-1 medications. One doesn't need to stop for the other. They both need to run simultaneously. There is a large market for GOP-1 brand users, and there's a large market for GOP-1 compound users. Self-payers and those who just prefer to use a vial, which is one of the reasons why Eli Lilly came out with the vials, but they're still a little too highly priced in comparison to these good prices that we get from these compound providers. So there's still a competitive advantage against Lily. So Lily's fighting a lot right now, trying to stay afloat, at the same time trying to counter the compound market. But listen, listen, Linda, at a point it just may get to don't oh, know the power of the people is power if enough petitions go in you know you got to think about this politically if enough petitions go in to to make a particular market remain for reason one two three or four that may be something that could be highly considered by the powers that be at the fda you know just throwing some nuggets out there just extra thinking and logic um um, because I honestly just don't believe in it, my opinion, that there will be a complete shutoff of compound medication, terzepatide, or semaglutide, or semaglutide. I like playing with both pronunciations, you know. The bougie one really gets me, semaglutide. You know, I like that one. Um, it's befitting, you know. It's befitting. So, you know, what do we do, y'all? What's next? What do we do? Keep our ears clear and our eyes forward. Because we constantly got to keep securing our compound bag. Okay? I'm going to get at y'all the next video. Be real.